Cartoons! I love them. They're silly, they're goofy, and they're always a good time, right? WRONG! Sometimes, cartoons will randomly choose to leave you on the ground, crying like a little baby. I needed to make this video and talk with you all about seven times in my life where I was innocently watching cartoons and then had my heart ripped out of my chest and stomped on with a steel-toed boot. Maybe you all have similar moments as mine, maybe you have moments of your own, I don't know, but I needed to talk to you about my top seven. Also, I have decided to make this video while drinking wine because I think you deserve to see me at my most emotional while going through these episodes. It's, it's gonna be a ride, here we go. Spoiler warning for any of these shows. Number seven, Avatar The Last Airbender, Tales of Ba Sing Se. Now you all knew this one was gonna be on the list. I mean, Tales of Ba Sing Se is a hell of an episode. It's meant to be a filler episode, but it's anything but. A filler queen, this one is not. I was a little surprised. I was like, oh, we get a little treat of seeing Uncle Iroh and what his usual day is around town. Oh look, he's giving insight to kids in town. Uh, that's just like good old Uncle Iroh. Oh look, he's going on a picnic, I think. And oh my God, is he making a memorial for his dead son? Oh my God, he's singing. Oh my God, he's crying. Oh my god, I'm crying. Yeah, that one had to be on this list. It was gorgeous. The whole thing is then capped off with a dedication to Mako, who's the original voice actor for Uncle Iroh, who passed away two months prior to this episode premiering. Happy birthday, my son. I forgot that it was his birthday. Number six, Steven Universe, Lion 3, straight to video. Let's be honest, I could name any number of Steven Universe episodes, not only for their complicated backstories, including my number one complex queen, Pearl. Well, I think you're pretty great. But also their treatment of mature emotional situations. I'm gonna name one that actually made me happy cry out of nowhere because I just didn't see it coming. When Steven watches that VHS tape he got from his magic lion, and here's his mom talking to him for the very first time. It is a message from a woman who knows that she will be gone once her son is born, telling him to live his life with love, the way that we've already been seeing him do. Stephen, we can't both exist. I'm going to become half of you. And I need you to know that every moment you love being yourself, that's me loving you and loving being you because you're going to be something extraordinary. You're going to be a human being. Hey, Sadie, come on, we gotta open up. And then his other friend, who was previously complaining about the lunches that her mom was making her, goes and gives her mom a call. Hey, mom? It made me give my mom a call. Number five, Winnie the Pooh, find her, keep her. Uh, this may not be on a lot of people's lists, but let me tell you, this episode has stuck with me my entire life since I was three, and that is no exaggeration. In this episode, Rabbit rescues and takes care of a little baby bird named Kessie. But then, suddenly, things go sideways when Kessie wants to learn how to fly in order to fly south for the winter. The night before she leaves, she asks him if he can read to her one last time. Would you read me one last bedtime story? And he says, you don't need me to read to you. You don't need me for anything. And he closes the door on her. She puts her book down, sits by the fire, and cries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that did it. Like I'd never heard crying before. He eventually does manage to say goodbye to her right at the last second before she takes off. Did you think I would leave without saying goodbye to you? And we leave Rabbit at the end of the episode sitting on a cliff waiting for her to return. Oh, f <laughs> Number four, Adventure Time, I Remember You. Adventure Time is another one of those shows that started out very silly, but then as seasons went on, dropped episodes with intense lore. Like for instance, at one point we learned that the Ice King, who's the silly villain of the show, was once just a normal guy who found a magic crown that upon using it, slowly over time made him lose his mind. Was it real, it was the crown? I know my mind is changing. 
I'm already too far gone to know what to do. And at the end of season four, we're treated to what seems to be an in-depth look at the emotional toll of this magic crown, not just on the Ice King, but on another character from the show, the cool vampire queen, Marceline, who reveals that she has known the Ice King back when he was still himself. In this episode, she is reading the message that he left her right before losing his mind. Marceline, is it just you and me in the wreckage of the world? That must be so confusing for a little girl. It's wild, because we as the audience are just as confused at the beginning of this episode as to their relationship, but we're able to put the pieces together, unlike the Ice King, who is just too far gone. And it breaks Marceline's and my heart. Well, I don't remember you. Oh, gosh. Number three, regular show, a regular epic battle. Regular show, I feel, always has episodes that start out in a simple way and then spiral into something more grand and ridiculous. I don't know, Pops is kind of weird. Uh, uh. And in the series finale, they decide to end on a very powerful blow, having Pops sacrifice himself to save the world. This isn't a bit, he actually dies. And then we're treated to a montage of the remaining characters returning home, building a statue of Pops, growing older, finding love, having children. We flash up to heaven where we see that they have been watched on a VHS tape labeled The Regular Show. <laughs> it was just wild. Jolly good show. Oh, <laughs> why did they have to end that way? That's such a sweet way to end this show. <laughs> ah! See, not all of them are very sad moments. Sometimes they're just really lovely. Unlike this next one. Number two, Futurama Jurassic Bark. First, let me preface this by saying that this episode is diabolical. Whoever wrote this episode deserves to apologize to mankind for their crimes. You are evil. Uh, basically, Fry, living in the future, goes to a museum and discovers a fossil that happens to be his old dog, Seymour. We can clone it! Seymour will live again! So they acquire the fossil, bring him back, and Dr. Farnsworth is like, guess what? This fossil is so well preserved that not only can we clone your dog, but we can also implant him with the original memory and personality. So you get your dog back, yay! Just before the cloning process is complete, we find out that Seymour died at the age of 15, 12 years after Fry left him. Wait here till I come back. Fry is like, oh my gosh. Seymour lived a long, happy life after I left. He moved on, and it would be unfair for me to bring him back because I haven't. So they don't. And we're then treated to one last flashback of what actually happened after Fry left. Seymour sitting outside of the store where they first met, waiting for Fry for the next 12 years until he died. F that ending. I'll never forget him. But he forgot me a long, long time ago. No, he f***ing did it. Oh, I'm so, I'm, I don't want to watch this. Why would they f***ing do that? Why would they do that? That's so f***ed up. That's so f***ed up. Up. Number one, The Simpsons, Mother Homer. I put this one at the top of my list because uh, I think in a brilliant way, it knocked me and many people who watched it on our ass for good reasons. The Simpsons is not unfamiliar with tender moments. See, do it for her meme here. But in this episode, Mother Homer, Homer finds out that his mom is alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. But after an emotional reunion, she finds out that she has to go on the run again. So Homer helps her to escape out in the desert. At least this time I'm awake for your goodbye. Oh, Homer. Remember, whatever happens, you have a mother and she's truly proud of you. Then, do we see him return to his family? Does it cut to black? Nope. Oh. 
makes me want to do that. If this list tells you one thing, it's that I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> like for sake. It's just brilliantly simple. It resonated with so many people even to this day that we're still seeing this depiction of Homer looking out at the stars. It just got me so badly while also doing so little that I had to put it as my number one on this list because of that brilliance. It's just so good. Well, that's my list <laughs> of the top seven. They still get me, man. Do you agree with this list? Do you have moments that I didn't bring up that you'd like to comment down below and make a bunch of people cry? Do so, please. I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in watching any of our previous videos, you can click over here. Or if you're new to the channel and would like to subscribe, click down here. That is it. And until next time, take it easy, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Woo! Peace out. Okay, I'm gonna go outside and, and look at the stars. <laughs>